It's only today that I know that, that I will exist, or maybe even in the next few minutes. But you don't know what's tomorrow. You can only prepare uh, and plan and prepare, but, but tomorrow is, is different. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Welcome to the Dream Big and Think Different podcast, where we inspire, impact, and empower. Progress is impossible if you always do things the way you have always done things. It's time to dream big. Here's your host, Dr. Sachin Maskey. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dream Big and Think Different podcast where our mission is to inspire, impact, and empower millions of people. I'm your host, Dr. Sachin Maskey, and today we have a very, very special guest and who's actually another dreamer, uh, Susan Shrestha, all the way from uh, Seattle and has a very inspiring story that we all need to hear. I'm very honored and very lucky to have him in our show today. And actually, he's my cousin brother. Uh, we both are born in Nepal, born and raised in Nepal. And uh, we are very lucky and very honored to have him here today in our show. And uh, welcome, uh, Susan, to our show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you, Sachin. I'm on a next night shift with my baby, so <laughs> uh, okay. doing, doing, doing okay, I, I guess. Uh, having great time being with my family, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again. I'm very honored, and uh, this is the opportunity. Uh, I just want to share everyone today in our show that I have actually spent a uh, lot of beautiful memories with with Susan uh, when I was in Nepal, uh, and I call him as his brother. I mean, he's my cousin brother. So you know, it's always a. Uh, you know, I still remember. I don't know if you remember this back in 2006 when I first came to the United States. Uh, we had a, a time spent together, and he drove me all the way back from the Seattle. To, to Portland. Do you remember that? Oh, yes, man. <laughs> well, that, that, those were very recent, I would say. I mean, we go way back. Uh, I remember uh, the, a couple, I would say a night or two nights before I left for US, we, we hung out uh, pretty much all night in that in that temple called Monkey Temple in Swambunath. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that, we go long, way, way long, man. That was about what? At least uh, 25, uh, 26 years ago. Yeah. yeah, I was, I think, just About starting 20. a medical school at that time. Yeah. I, I do remember that. Yeah, it's been a while. Time flies. But again, you know, we're back together and with this show today. And hopefully we can um, help people to get inspired, empower, you know. So anyways, let me give you a quick bio of my brother here, Susan Shrestha. Uh He is a president and the founder of the Monoram Foundation. Uh, he's also a founder and creator of the company called Himalayan, very popular company called Himalayan Dog Chew. And uh, he's also a past district governor of Kionis, Nepal. He's a TED speaker. He was a TED speaker in 2016. He also appeared in the Shark Tank back in 2015. That's a short bio. I'm not sure if I miss anything, if you can add <laughs> something else in that, but uh, I, I did good on that, I guess. <laughs> no, no, that, that's uh, good. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, so topics we're going to cover today basically would be mostly focused on, you know, uh, leadership, entrepreneurship, uh, basically uh, about Nepal. We're going to talk about uh, giving back and all that. So my first question for Susan, uh, Dai, uh, for my all my guests, I would like to uh, ask is, who is Susan Shrestha and why he is in this world? Oh, my God. I like to see myself as, as, a, as a family guy, uh, you know, a father, a son, um, a husband, and, and uh, enjoy my time mostly with my family. Uh, it's probably because of the roots uh, from Nepal that, that family stayed together for a long, long time. Uh, we have, you know, just like Christmas where families meet once a year, we have several festivals in Nepal where uh, there's a festival for where siblings meet. There's a festival for where you meet your parents. They, you know, and then every year we we make attempts uh, to meet several times. So it's in the roots. That's uh, I like to uh, say who I am. And and um, you know your second question, why I'm here. I actually asked that myself 
a lot. And, and as a matter, I've asked that this morning. And then these days I ask that all the time, uh, not just for myself, but also remind me that I'm here already. Uh, man, that's the, the only thing I should know. Uh, and that there is everybody else, everything around me uh, is also here. And they are there for a reason, uh, for the same reason that I'm here as well. So just by respecting that they exist at what they are and with their own nature and and, um, and just understand that, I, I like to say that why I'm here is not to ponder <laughs> uh, but but to just enjoy uh, because it's only today that I know that that I will exist or maybe even in the next few minutes but you don't know what's tomorrow you can only prepare uh, and plan and prepare but but tomorrow is is different <laughs> so so I'm I'm here just to just just another life form uh, enjoying because the consciousness that he, this has or this has or anything thereof is here. Uh, I like to believe that that there is a bigger consciousness that that made this consciousness, which continuously is making more consciousness. You know, it, it's an unending, unending cycle. Uh, no beginning. Either in 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 our culture, in our Eastern philosophy, we talk about kani, uh, which is neither dark nor light, neither good nor evil, neither, neither evil nor good. It, it's 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 nothing. You know, it exists and it doesn't exist at the same time. So that that's. I believe how why I am, and you know, recently we we had this um, in in our culture. We do a lot of uh, rituals and worshiping, and each rituals and yeah. worshiping has uh, not just uh, mythological uh, stories and meanings, but it actually has some life lessons, and then it just prepares you uh, for those life lessons. And then the most recent one, uh, we had a ritual called Bhimsen Puja, and uh, Bhimsen is one of the characters of Mahade uh, of uh, Pats Pandav, and then we we do that worship for a particular reason on that particular day uh, to to understand not just life but but life in nature uh, because without nature life i don't believe life is any possible and, and without life to experience that nature the nature becomes irrelevant irrelevant so i don't know yeah. and we can go deep <laughs> no this is definitely a very open question i ask all my yeah audience and i always think myself you know why we are here you know that's right. a you know god created us somebody created us and 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 i, I believe uh, that's a very important question to know you know and yeah, yeah. <laughs> the purpose in life is important and and i appreciate you sharing that with us today uh thank Definitely, you and thank you. yeah sure um so let's go back to uh, our our origin which is nepal i was born and raised in nepal uh, you are born in Nepal. I wanted to ask you what, when you were your child, and and we can go wherever you want to, but I wanted to ask you personally, what was your childhood dream? And when you were like in, let's say, you're born in Nepal, what, what, and when you started having the dream, what do you wanted to be? You know, go from there. Well, now I'm thinking it like this. You know, back then I probably wasn't. Uh, but then there were two kinds of dream I used to have, one while I was sleeping and one while I wasn't sleeping. And yes. when I was a kid, uh, the dreams I used to have while I, while I wasn't sleeping would be something that, that uh, the, the community did not have. I mean, that's, that's what human endeavor is to want and desire that you don't have and that other people have. That they that you see as they are enjoying, and also that was a good thing because um, in our family, I mean, all families have uh, some members with health problems, and we do too. And growing up, I mean, um, I was I was in a good school, uh, you know, doing very well with my grades and everything. So I wanted to really become a doctor. Oh, really? Really? So I actually really prepared myself towards that by, you know, when I I, I still remember when I was a little kid about second grade or first grade. I had a neighbor. He was uh, an old man. We called him Baje. He used to catch frogs, right, uh -huh. uh, or toads, and he used to dissect them, not to study, but to prepare it for food, right? And he used to surround himself with kids like us who would help him, right? And uh, in the meantime, he would teach us that this is the stomach. Check this out. This is the heart. Look at the heart beating. Wow. Um, and then when the muscles twitch. So, so you know, growing up, uh, you know, being interested to become a doctor and I was, you know, uh, studying that. Uh, so that was, that was really my dream uh, was to become a doctor, even through high school, uh, college. I really, really prepared. But when I was 
almost ready. I thought I was not ready for, for medicine because that requires uh, so much, so much work uh, that I, I did not have the discipline and uh, I believe uh, did not have the, the desire, ultimate desire <laughs> to, to go <laughs> through that hard work because it, it's really seven years of pure meditation to, to learn every, you know, uh, every cell and tissues. I mean, it, uh, it's big. But, uh, but yeah, and then I decided to get a career in something else. So that was the, the dream uh, while I was awake. But while I was sleeping and, and uh, mostly in my uh, deep uh, conscious and unconscious levels, I believe I was just, uh, just a guy. I mean, I used to dream of animals, you know, cats, uh, just, just like any other dreams. Uh, but I used to do a lot of lucid dreaming. I don't know if you're familiar with lucid dreaming. It's, it's when There's a term called lucid. To... It's, it's, it's a medical it's a, it's term. term. Oh, yeah. there is a medical term lucid. I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, uh, yeah tell me I, more I, about it. Um, lucid dreaming is when you're able to sometimes control your dreams. For example, when you fall off a building, uh, you don't wake up. You just catch a rope or, or just jump to, you know, in the air. You can jump to another building or something like that. Uh, and a lot of other things. Uh, that's, that's an easiest example I wanted to give you. Okay. Uh, but there are other occasions where where you are able to see a cat and go deep in his eyes and actually have a conversation uh, with the <laughs> Wow. <laughs> because, yeah, the, the, those, those are the, the sleeping dream. And then uh, I'm very fortunate to be able to be able to achieve both. Uh, not, not as a medical doctor, but at least as, a, as, a, as an engineer, uh, you know, at least in computer work. Uh, but I just like to create, you know, be able to uh, see things in nature and be able to bring something out. Uh, even, even Himalayan dog shoe, uh, it was not something that I found first. It was a, a friend of mine who found that, that the dogs love Himalayan dog shoe. And uh, Suman, uh, it was Nishis who found it first. And Suman is the one who found that, you know, it could be a commodity, right? And uh, I just entered. I just entered into the company as a support. No, he's talking about Dotsu, how it got started. Himalayan Dotsu. Suman was the one who thought of making commodities. Commodities. So think, Suman, yeah. Nishes, I, and a couple other friends got together, and I was able to create this company and, and a vision. How I mean, you know, creating a product. I don't think that's very difficult because we were creating in our company a product every week. Every week we had a couple of new products. The decision was what product is best to take to the market, not just for the customer, but the value and the stories and the quality of life that it is going to bring among all the stakeholders. Uh, those were more important. Sure. So, so these are the Definitely. things that I was able to you know, create and, and do. So I like doing things like even in Nepal now, I'm doing things that uh, something new for the community. I mean, it's, it's everywhere else, but, but something new. So th those are those things. Sounds good. Yeah, de definitely. Uh, I like your dream, both dreams you had in, in your childhood, uh, you know, sleeping dream and day you're not sleeping. Uh, I think uh, what, what you just said that being a doctor, because uh, I remember in my family, my, my dad told me you have three options <laughs> to become like, that's what we, we've been told as a kid, right? One, to become a doctor, an engineer and a pilot. Oh, wow. And as you remember, we had three. Yeah. So, so he wanted me to be an engineer and my, my uh, elder brother, Robin, uh, to be a doctor. And then the, the, the middle brother, uh, Pravin, who unfortunately passed away as you know, to become a pilot. So that was the, the dream that uh, we were kind of instilled. But I really thought like when you told me that, I remember that just, you know, the dream that I had when I was a kid too. Um, I actually, we had in our, when our children. But going, before you come to US, I want to go back to Nepal again. And because I spent some time with you guys, especially I stayed in, in your house in, in Kathmandu, uh, you know, for one year. I don't even remember that. Oh, yes. uh, I was there... And uh, we spend a lot of time together, quality time, especially I was more close to Suman. But I want to hear today from you, you know, the childhood going back to. Uh, so tell me more about like how was your upbringing in, in, in going back to Kadbari, you know, with, that's original. And when how did you end up with Dharan? Why Kathmandu? You know, those kind of things. I mean, uh, like I said in the beginning of the conversation, we were really close knitted family as as pretty much all families in Nepal. Uh, not, not in the, I'm not talking about we are not close in the U.S., uh, but it's, it's a different close. I mean, 
Think about a house where everybody lives in the same house. The house, more, exactly. I would say, say eight, total eight rooms, but there are about 15 people living in the house. Yeah. I mean, eight eight rooms house is a big house 40 years ago in, in some parts of our but right? But there are also a lot of people like all the sons who have grown up, have their wife and kids living in the same house, right? Uh, or, or built a small makeshift house next to the house. So, so every it's, it's a, a joint family uh, environment. So growing up, uh, that's that's what I experienced is spending time with my dad, with my mom, with my brothers and sisters. But I, I totally understand where you're coming from when you have only few choices. Yeah, it, it's different with all families. I I had only one choice because uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was getting the best marks among all the kids. Uh, so I was given the choice of becoming a doctor. So that's how. Uh, you know, I was molded into, but uh, I don't want to say I gave up. I just wanted to take a different path because I had that opportunity. <laughs> I still remember uh, when I uh, when I sat for the interview and then my teacher, uh, you know, begged me to accept it. And I was because I have a, I, I, you know, I've shared, I probably have shared this experience with you uh, where. Not really. I, I probably got scared of, of working too hard because uh, I was only, what, 18, 19 back then, right? 19. And uh, and my choice was to work hard for 12 years mm -hmm. and then become successful and start earning money and have a family or have fun for 12 years and uh, see what you can do. You know, you continuously improve your life. And I, I chose that path because I've seen my friends uh, who told me their stories about how much they had to study and then work hard. To, to... <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, thank <laughs> God. It's why I was... Oh my God, you know, because it's not, you know. and, and, uh, sure. in Dharan, uh, I still remember hanging out with Praveen and I can really relate because we're in the same age group. Yes. Uh, Suman and you are in the same age group, Praveen and I are in the same age group and Rabin Dai is everybody's Dai. We all look up to him. And, um, so, so, you know, we're community kids in Dharan, right? I mean, we, we hang out with the community kids and your kids at school. And in, in Dharan, we are mostly community kids. Uh, everybody, uh, household has some kids. We all hang out after 5 p.m. Nobody's at home until 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, we just hang out. You know, we used to go, I think trolling would be the right word. <laughs> we used to just troll, like kids here. I mean, I've seen kids troll, with, you know. But it, in the run, we just go uh, to the forest and, and uh, you know, uh, bring uh, bring leaves sometime, you know, uh, collect clays. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, those are the things we used to do. It doesn't relate with the U.S. because you wouldn't understand. I mean, the toys that we had was this little uh, ball bearing of, uh, of a, of a semi-truck of six-wheeler, a big ball bearing about eight inches in uh, circumference. And we used to roll that with a little stick mm -hmm. on, the, on the street. Yeah. And we used to do that hours, like just hang out. And some, some of the other kids would have a bicycle wheel just the tires, not the not the wheels with the spoke and everything, but just the outer tire. And we used to run that with a little stick, and and that that was our toy for the for the whole day and night. We used to do that, just talk to each other. And like I said, sometimes the Dolbaji would uh, not just show us how to do the 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 toads and the frogs, but he used to do um, like sculpting. He used to what he did once was amazing. I still remember. I was probably second or third grade. Batteries, the outer shell of the bat. He collected all the batteries, dead batteries. And what he did was he opened it and he collected just the outer shell and then the black, mm -hmm. you know, the the powder of the inside with just charcoal, right, carbon, and he separated them. So he used the black as paint. He mixed it with oil or something to make a paint. But the but the outer layer he collected over time and made it a bunch. And he showed us how to melt it in a little little container. And it was so new mm -hmm. for everybody, you know. Wow. Uh, those, those are the childhood and uh, the, the the core memories I have about childhood, right? And sometimes we just saw uh, sure. these ducks, you know, uh, or or uh, birds. I mean, we used to uh, do catapult and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and chase birds. No, not a good thing, right? But hey, you know, you, 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 <laughs> I mean, that's our get, get. No, I have a similar memory that some of the things you just told me, we had a similar, you know, kind of um, way we play. And uh, I still remember that we used to play the house fly. I don't know you guys used yeah. to do that. Stick a back end of the house fly and run with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, grasshoppers and frogs, all those things are our, our toys, you know. The dragonflies, right? Dragonflies. Dragonfly, dragonfly. I don't know that. <laughs> you know, try to 
Yeah, and then one of the trait I, I used to have was uh, destroy things. You know, every time yeah, and there's something in the house, like they used to bring. I remember getting a watch and breaking it. Down. Yep. And I would just open it up and break it down, try to see what's inside. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. then, uh, of course, just be yeah. creative and just, you know. Well, I used to fail all the time. I mean, once I yeah. break it down, yeah. I to put it together and I couldn't. I couldn't put it together. <laughs> uh, nine years for some of the time, I could never put it together. And, you know, in Nepal, you get. Sure. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Yeah. But that's that's a beautiful memory we always need to be cherishing in our life for sure. So that was Dharan, where the hometown I was born and raised. And I think for you, uh, I remember you moved to Kathmandu yeah. uh, for for plus two, I think, 10 plus two. Uh, I went to India. I remember you went to Kathmandu. But my question is like, why did you guys, uh, your whole family went to Kathmandu? And then why uh, you ended up and, and when you ended up in the U.S.? Well, the reason we moved to Kathmandu was our father got elected to the office, uh, the the office where okay. it warranted that that he needed to be in Kathmandu, and and he couldn't be there by himself, so he needed his family, so we were there, and all all of us were there, all six kids, <laughs> mom and and dad, uh, we all moved, pretty much migrated to Kathmandu. Uh, that was the reason, and and we studied in Kathmandu and finished our high school. Uh, the U.S. the choice to come to the U.S. was because of family. Uh, most of our family members were in the U.S. In, and not in other countries. I had, I had opportunity to go to, uh, I mean, in, in Nepal, there was not much. That was not, I mean, our teachers, some of the teachers used to say that in school, that if you, if your father did not have a factory and your father was not already in the trade, if, you, if your father cannot afford to send you to medical school, if your father, if then, 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 if, if, if there were, there were a lot of logics uh, of, of success. And and uh, and one of the logic was to go abroad and become successful. And in our family, our uncles had demonstrated that. All our uncles and lots of people, and and it, it just made sense uh, to to us that we can always go to another place and and be, create something uh, that otherwise you could not. And then um, that opened up for us, the entire family, as a matter. Uh, I'm probably the only remaining Nepali citizen in our family. So yeah, in the whole greater, a greater uh, grand, you know, we are about 140, 140, 45 children of our greater, the grandfather, great grandfather's uh, children in the U.S. So coming to the U.S. was mostly due to the family reasons, because uh, all of us are here in the U.S. and not abroad. I, I had an opportunity to go to Spain. You know, that's that's why I because that's why I still like Spain in the World Cup. If it isn't if it isn't for Nepal or the U.S., you know, in all the countries I like, but but in football I like I like Spain. Uh, that that's the reason, and I I nearly went there, but the, it was a family decision that that I go to U.S. So that made me come here for further studies, and then you know to just opening another door <laughs> to to show me uh, what the world has uh, in in preparation for me. So yeah, that that was the reason why I came to the U.S. Uh, worked hard in the U.S. Uh, learned the hard way. Uh, Sometimes I wished maybe I should have just become a medical doctor. You know, work hard twelve years, and then you know just just chill. Uh, of course, there's no chilling. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Uh, yes. But the, yes. The, the, just a difficult, uh, just a different way of difficult, I would say. Uh, you know, those college days where uh, you had to work differently. Sure. Hard way in the U.S. especially. Um, and that, that's... So you that, came to the unit... To study, yeah. To full high school. You, you came to UNICEF for the for family reason and an opportunity uh, for the study... Yeah. Uh, when was that? It was 2000, around... It was 1998. 1998. Oh, okay. No, that that time I went to medical school, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's so long, we were... 1998. Wow, that's a long time. So, the the, the Himalayan docs, I want to go back to uh, fast forward. When I met you in 2006, uh, I believe uh, we didn't have a conversation about Himalayan docs, too. But when I heard about it the first time, it was from the Shark Tank. Yeah. You know, I guess uh, you, you guys were... You know, then Shark Tank gave us the, like, everyone, like, you know, it was exposure to a lot of people. But uh, I, I, you already told, like, can you tell me a little bit about the journey, about why you guys started that company, how you got exited, yeah. and uh, and the beautiful story, inspiring story. I want everyone to hear this. Absolutely. I was uh, in Denver, and, you know, I was, I was working again. Uh, it was a uh, life joy. But uh, once I moved to Bellingham and then stayed uh, together with, with Subban and mom and dad, uh, we were together in the family. And they had already found uh, this product uh, that was popularly known as Durka. 
that that everybody uh, chewing in, in Nepal, the people chewing. Or surpi. Surpi, yes. And Suman and Nishes and, and friends invited me uh, and then they told me uh, that there is this product uh, that's enjoyed by dogs. And they, they put the product on the table and I said, well, this is surpi, guys. And they said, yeah, and dogs. <laughs> and I go, don't, don't fool with me, you know, don't quit. And they were like, no, look, look at the dog that's eating the chew. And I look at this dog chaos and it's literally eating the chew. And then I, I was shocked. And this was 2003, right? This is about 2000. No, this is about 2006. 2006. Six, okay. 2000, I would say almost, almost 2007, but this is still 2006. And uh, when I saw that, I was shocked and actually laughed a lot. Uh, you know, I was, I was actually even, <laughs> uh, it was in you know, the thoughts was mocking how this, this product, who that thought that that uh, dogs love it and that's how that's how i found it but but the way it was found was uh, a dog was really sick and it needed something and it was the only to chew that the dog would eat and the dog survived so that's that's a great story we had and and i i i, I got sold with the story and i said hey you know what we can we can sell this but we need a reason why we do this i mean it's a great product but then think about this anybody can can make this product afterwards because it's not it's not something new. It's already there. And in a couple of years, when we take it to the market, everybody's going to know and everybody's going to do it. And there are, there are better people uh, in business and then manufacturing who can do better job. We have to have a vision. We have to know why we are doing this. And then in the process, uh, we found we found few reasons why we're doing this. We created a vision uh, that first, it helps the community in Nepal. Uh, it gives them this opportunity that that nobody has given them. And we said, hey, you know what? The product would always do that. But but what sector, where is it that we want to hit the most? And we thought in rural Nepal, there was a trend that back in those days, girls were never sent to school about 50 years ago. Girls were like, ah, you don't go to school, only the boys go to school. And then when uh, a, a whole a new thought came in that everybody should go to school. Then the families started sending their boys to private school and girls to public school, right? Mm -hmm. And we thought, and that was a big trend in, in rural Nepal. So what we designed was uh, that why not give those uh, rural farmers an opportunity where they can send even the girls to, to private school if, if, if they had this opportunity or if they were uh, economically capable of. So that was the drive. We said, okay, we are going to do this to improve the lives of young women in Nepal, where they get all this opportunity that they were, the entire generation, the whole, all previous generations were, were denied of. So, okay. And so that was the motivation uh, towards uh, Himalayan dog shoe. Mm -hmm. So where we focused in Nepal was with, with all the farmers where they had family and especially if they had girls in the family. Uh, what it did was it allowed them to new income source uh, that allowed them to send their girls to, to better school uh, and better opportunity. And then, um, you know, I believe we've been a little successful in that. Uh, currently, we have about, about 450 employees in Nepal. And about, we want to get to 80% girls. Right, right now, we are at about 60%. Uh, 60%. Wow. And then our goal is to become 80% women operated uh, a business in Nepal because we wanted to show and prove uh, it, it's, it's a proof of concept, I would say, that, that if you employ uh, this, this skilled women, they can do almost the same job. So it doesn't, it, it's, it, the, the gender is irrelevant in, in any manufacturing. It's something we wanted to show as a proof of concept in Nepal. And then we're getting there. So, so those are the vision that drove us and then, uh, that made us not sleep at night. <laughs> so so yeah, every yeah. day before bed, we'd say, hey, are we done for today? Because, you know, uh, because when you sleep, you need that little bit of sleep and then uh, you want to finish that. So so waking up in the morning was, hey, we need to do this because we don't have much time. Because like I said, it's, it's, we only know that we have today. You know, so Sure. So yeah, it's a beautiful story of guys with a small idea. I started in 2006 and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then 13 years later, I think you guys were doing almost uh, one person or two person of uh, of Nepal export to US, uh, right? Right. I mean, that was the statistics. Uh, Nepal doesn't do a lot yeah. of export. Uh, that's how I would like to say. Right. <laughs> Our total export in in 2019, I believe, was less than a billion. 
we just finally reached a billion dollar in export just just recently right and and uh we we do we do about back then we used to do about 10 million in in uh, export to the US so that that gave us 1% of the export and now now we are about almost almost 2% of the total export and we were doing very good i mean we didn't do hundreds of millions of sales in the US uh but but we did significant towards nepalese uh not the gdp but at least the export part uh and that was what we wanted to encourage was if if you have those vision and and have the entire community behind you in that vision uh then then ultimately you are able to achieve that and if we can create those little products in nepal uh, every few years i mean in 10 years imagine uh, those 2% if you can multiply that by 20 that's 40% and, and that could create a whole new wave of something something for nepal it's already starting it's already it's already different now. hopefully it becomes big one day i definitely think it's a huge a massive impact and i appreciate uh, you know i i would wish you good luck and the team in around nepal and it's definitely something i'm looking forward to you know and we will have another interview at that time <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely i'm looking forward to it. i mean uh, and also the shark tank was uh, was a blessing i mean the us uh, the american people are by far in my experience are the best uh and to be with of course to be among because i always say in every interview everywhere uh, this is this is the land where i uh is the land of my karma this is where i become who I am right now of course uh, taught me a lot of things as an adult you know and it, it continues to do that that's the that's the beauty <laughs> the americans never get tired <laughs> of of uh, everybody else so it, it's a good and i've spent most of my life i can proudly say it, in, in the more than half of my life in the in the US uh, learning and, and sharing uh, so so it's 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 where uh, opportunity doesn't come to you you know you have to go yes. for opportunity because it's everywhere you know yes. it's not like where do i get an opportunity in the US everywhere in the air uh, in the waves i mean think about it uh, america makes most of its money in the air <laughs> you know this much more and then right all of this communication uh, everything is digital so i like to believe that we can do the same thing in nepal uh if everybody with similar thoughts uh yeah, yeah, go and do something something anything but different and then take risk uh you know uh we can we can definitely <laughs> make it <laughs> yes yeah? yeah definitely you know and uh you know uh in, in this land of opportunity i just want to say something that i really believe myself so as you know i'm a doctor and i'm i'm doing different things in my career too and right now my major goal is to impact and make a you know huge uh, difference in other people's life and that's the main reason i'm motivated also because well, i have everything you know i have a beautiful wife uh, beautiful kids beautiful house you know whatever god has given to me i'm i'm grateful for everything but what i have done for others is the most important thing yeah, yeah. and making a difference yeah. you know and that's why i started this podcast to help people yeah. get inspired by people like yourself you know and and go from there so uh i just wanted to uh switch a little bit gear about the foundation you are part of yeah. uh, uh monorama foundation can you tell us briefly about the foundation uh how it got started what is the mission right uh there's this uh, other nice story about how it was founded in short a couple of my uh, parents uh, friends uh were so inspired by their i would say by their deeds in the past and in their friendship uh, especially the friendship together uh wanted to mm-hmm. start a library in nepal uh, with their name uh, manaram and manaram was actually coined by suma uh, from mana uh, mom and that rap is father Uh, Manaram and um, and we said okay you know let's start a library uh, called Manaram library and we we did a library in a hometown in Kampari to me that but a year later the library did so well the the concept uh, that few other schools wanted a similar library and we said hey you know what let's do five libraries this year and this is about 2011 12 and in 2013 when my father become became uh, the district governor uh, for the Lions district in Nepal he wanted to do a little bit more he wanted to build 20 libraries and then we did 20 more libraries uh but then he he uh, fell ill uh, he got really sick with his uh, kidneys and uh, we we wanted to do something uh, different again and uh, he envisioned that we have a library in every district in nepal there are 77 districts let's envision that there is a district there is a library in every district so that they can become a network 
of libraries and, and then discuss each other and share uh, becomes a one big Nepal library. We said, okay, let's do it. And and uh, it was a quest to, to do that. And in the process, uh, in our district of Sankwa Sabah, we envisioned that let's have a library in all the high schools in Sankwa Sabah as well. So, so we went these, these two product, uh, these two uh, vision together. And, and by 2015, we had created about 135 libraries uh, in all the high schools wow. in Nepal. And the way we support is every year uh, they can get some kind of matching grant through the foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they can also do is we also have fixed deposit of, of $1,000 in, in every high school. And then the interest earned is used to purchase uh, newspaper, magazines, regular basis so that students are you know involved with the current uh, news and all of that mm -hmm. so that's how the uh, libraries are doing right now the foundation uh, also offers scholarship to three young ladies to study at agriculture university mm -hmm. uh, so so young women of nepal wishes to study agriculture uh, either veterinary or or plant uh, at, at any agriculture university in Nepal can get a scholarship for four years, all paid uh, room and board, tuition, books. Um, there are a lot of, lot of things uh, we, we take so that you focus on your study, get graduated, and then, and that, uh, and then do something uh, for yourself. And it, so, so we just started that. We started with three uh, young, very bright, extremely talented, uh, qualified uh, uh, women who deserve it. Uh, they have to be deserving as well. Sure. Uh, and also they have to pass the test. We, we don't, we don't, it's not an automatic. So they have to pass the entrance test and they have to be qualified and deserved. So we do, we do stuff like this and it's totally funded by the family, uh, the Manaram family, the greater Manaram family and, and our enterprises. Uh, and then it's great ride. Uh, we have a great team in Nepal. Great, great team, uh, really senior leaders, my, my father's friends are still running uh, the foundation in Nepal. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, we do a lot of things. We also do CSR, uh, all of our company CSR uh, through through the foundation, pretty much all of it. And we've, uh, we adopt a school uh, every year. We adopt a school and uh, empower them with resources that they otherwise would not be able to achieve it. Uh, for example, a school wanted a, a photocopy machine, uh, for not just for the school, but for the community because uh, photocopying is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in the U.S., it's ten cents a page. In, in Nepal, it's it's cost ten cents. In the U.S., ten cents is like, hey, you know what? It's just ten cents. But ten cents is a lot of money in Nepal. <laughs> it's only ten rupees. But ten rupees is is a lot of money for about ninety percent of Nepalese. So we created this idea. Hey, you know what? If we give them a photocopy machine, let's give them an industrial photocopy machine. So we invested about four thousand dollar into this new photocopy machine, which would print, copy, scan. I do a lot of other things and also print a book, 200 page book in like five minutes. You know, if, if the school needed a book and they only had one copy and had needed 60 copies right now, uh, our machine is able to do that in one day. So we empowered them with the machine and what they did was they forwarded that cap capacity to the community. Now the community can go there and get a photocopy for two rupees for, for about a penny, about two pennies. So, so the community is saving, uh, the school is saving, and then everybody benefits. So those are the kind of small investments we make, uh, just the social investments. Uh, we also empowered them with a telescope because they would study uh, and look at the moon only on papers, only on books, and sometimes computer. So what we did was when we installed a telescope, now they're able to look at it themselves, the, the real thing. So it was, it was a gesture to tell them that you have to be able to look at it yourself, not just read the books. You have to experience it to actually know it and then be able to share. It. So, so those are the things. Uh, we, we adopted a school next year. We're adopting, uh, that was a high school. Now we're adopting uh, an elementary school in, in Sankhapati. So I, I think uh, that's a... That's a very beautiful thing you guys have been doing. And, and, and what I think also a secret of happiness, you know, ultimately is to serve others. And I think you guys are doing this for a long time. And I, again, appreciate the hard work and all this giving back to the community. You're listening to the Dream Big and Think Different podcast with Dr. Sachin Maskey. 
be sure to stop by SachinMaskeyMD.com to download a free copy of Dr. Maskey's book. So right now, my other uh, curiosity about you is, uh, what is your current um, uh, dream you're thinking of? Uh, especially, I'm, 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 I'm hoping that you're thinking back in Nepal. And what, is, what do you want to say about that? I have a very modest dream. <laughs> It's to just just improve Nepalese life by just one tiny step, you know. Like before I die, and this is this is true vision. Of course, I want to be with my family uh, throughout my life. I cannot do this without without my my family. It, it's paramount. Uh, but but if if I were to do something uh, and as as a dream, you know, not not the whole country of Nepal, but at least Sankwasava district, or even if not Sankwasava district, just Kabari. And not Khadbari, I would say just Tumling Tar is, is my hometown, right? Tumling Tar, uh, the, the southern part of Khadbari. Just that community. I, I, my dream is to ensure that every child that's born today over there, when they grow up and become, uh, come off an adult, they find an opportunity right there. That's my dream, is to be able to create a, a, a sort of, I would say, socio-economic education, health, in that community where they find the opportunity there. And uh, I started this mission a few years ago uh, when I went back to Nepal nine years ago. Wow. And then I have already laid the foundation. And then slowly I'm, I'm you know, putting the, putting the Lego pieces together. And, and, uh, and it's working out as, as a proof of concept. What I did was we said, okay, let's start a, a dealership, car dealership. There wasn't a concept of car dealership. There, were, there used to be small uh, uh, workshops, uh, services, uh, stations like that, but not a, not a, a big dealership car garage. And we envision that we invest a lot of money and create this something that nobody's able to do. And we created this dealership in a part of town where people did not want to live. You know, they did not want to build businesses. They did not want to do agriculture because it was not, it was barren. There was only a few families. So what we said was, you know what, let's create something over there and then uh, envision that it's going to grow up that the community is going to grow because if the community grows, the economy grows. If the economy grows, it empowers people to be able to do whatever they want to do. So we built this uh, dealership, a brand new building, invested a lot of money. And it's been five years. So right now, it's, there's one new building being built every month. Wow. So in the last, yeah, in the last five years, about 70 buildings have been built around it. Yeah, wow. and there are either hotels, uh, you know, residential area, offices, factories, and we're like, hey, you know what? This this is great. So if you do something new somewhere, it's just going to attract everybody and and uh, create this whole new economy. And um, and uh, you know, touch wood, I love it because I recently had an incident where these people really appreciated what we did and offered. Uh, this this statistics that pretty much everybody's kids are now not hungry, mm. and that was that was the beauty. I was like, wow, I didn't even do anything. I I was creating a business, and if I'm creating a business, and if I'm creating that to make everybody successful, I'm also successful, right? Because it's because of them now my business is successful. So so I like to I like to see it like that. If if we that's that's what I want to plant in Nepal. That's that's what I dream uh, is to be able to do that. And then, and recently we did another franchise uh, in Kabari. You know, uh, 20 years ago, there was no concept of going to restaurant to celebrate. You know, you would celebrate at home. Right. You would bring, you know, a kilo of milk, uh, a kilo of uh, chicken or meat, bring it home, cook, yeah. invite friends and eat. So 20 years ago, a trend started where you don't cook at home. Now you go to a restaurant to eat, right? Yeah. But now what we started was, hey, you go to a restaurant and eat. You, of course, celebrate birthday and eat. But how about you've been doing it the same way for 20 years? And if you wanted to do it in urban style, you know, then you have to go to Dharan or you have to go to Kathmandu, right? Right. But, but only about 10% of people have this opportunity to go and have this experience. Because they can't afford mm -hmm. to go to travel to Dharan uh, from Khadbari because it costs you, what, at least $50 to go to Dharan and come back, right? 5,000 rupees, 6,000 rupees. Yeah. So that's a lot of money. But can they experience, uh, you know, food, uh, the, the, the experience of the restaurant in, in Khadbari? And we said, yes, why not, right? So we created this franchise, this brand new restaurant, and then it's giving them a lot of experience and then it's doing very well. And then not just that, now... 
other franchises want to open other restaurants around and which is which is great right for it creates jobs i mean we have 20 employees right away wow uh those kids yeah uh, having their 20 25 year olds yeah who otherwise don't have jobs now all of a sudden have a regular job you know i still remember I, i've been to Khatbari, by the way i've been to the the place here you were just mentioning 30 years ago and and i remember the plane going there and walk two hours yeah i i, I think the thing have changed now and definitely what you what you guys are doing is awesome and again wish you good luck and oh, yeah. a lot of success and that'll be you know awesome to hear next time when i go to uh, Nepal, I would like to go there and, and enjoy those, you know, experience myself. <laughs> Definitely. And then when you go, let me know. Uh, I would like to be there because uh, when when you are there, there's a couple of things, uh, you know, uh, outside the box. Sure. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. We can explain. Definitely, definitely. It's, it's a beautiful... So, Susan, the, yeah. sorry. So, Susan, the, uh, I just wanted to... Uh, we're coming towards the end of the or so. Uh, it's been a very, you know, uh, beautiful... Uh, uh, exciting to hear from from you. you have done so much things in your life i wanted to help people listening uh to to get uh, kind of an inspiration from you uh, i want to ask you a question that might help people to to get that inspiration so my question is who and what inspires you and drives you every day to become productive you know the, the person that i've learned most in my entire life is, is my my father and my mother, right? And what I like to believe is what they have done uh, for the family and the community, for those who cannot or does not have, has always inspired me and, and uh, uh, make me want to become productive all the time. At least, you know, uh, end of the day, you saying, hey, you know what, this is something, you know, you added uh, to to. Uh, th- th- those are the guys uh, that I've I've seen, and then what they have done. You know, since my uh, my father has always been a community leader. Uh, that's how he got elected to that office as well, and and it it stayed in his root. Uh, not and then he got that I believe from his father, who was a community leader. Uh, my grandfather was the one who started uh, the high school in Kapari oh, wow. uh, called Male Madanik Bidele. He's the first president. He's the one who started. Uh, of course, there were other donors, but the land. I mean, he did not donate the land. He did not bring in the money, but he he's the one who put it together. You know, and then I, my father did the same thing. Uh, he put it all together. And then I, I like to do that too. And then that's the trait, uh, the, 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 the core uh, trait uh, that I have uh, acquired. And those are the ones I look upon. And it makes my life easy as well to understand the measure of success. I like to believe the measure of success is if you can become with a family and then how well uh, you've taken care of a family, you know, as a, as, a, as, a, as a member of the family. So that's that's how I measure and I'm blessed to be with the family. Uh, but to become productive, uh, you know, uh, is, is what that drives me, is to be able to see that my community is a little bit better today for whatever I have done uh, for the today. And then every morning when I wake up, I would think about, how am I going to make that uh, community better today through my productive day? So, so those are the things that drives me. And then every time I have a question, I think of what my father would say. And if that doesn't give me an answer or sometimes you get stuck, then I open the book, uh, Bhagavad Gita. And, and usually about 100% of the time, it, it will have an answer for me. Wow. Actually, I have another question in, in top of that. What are the books you read? I know you're an avid reader. And yeah. I started reading, honestly, believe I used to read medical school book, but when I started reading all this, uh, I would say finance or self-help or pers- uh, personal yeah. development book. Uh, do you have any favors that you want to share with the uh, audience? I mean, I, I, I read books through uh, when when my friends uh, advise, uh, suggests me, and this is a great book you should read. And then I read the last uh, contemporary books or the, the newest book I read was... Uh, uh, you, you will know her army, uh, the sapiens. Uh, I read that book in entirety. It was. It took me a while. I'm a slow reader. But recently, um, and then the Bhagavad Gita is the go-to book for me. If, if I, I don't read it regularly, but once in a while, uh, when I'm either really happy, or really sad, or really angry, you know, with my emotions, when I'm in my extreme emotions, I just open the book to tell me why those emotions are there, etc. But but right now I'm reading uh, Meditation by uh, Marcus Aurelius. Uh, Aurelius, he wrote that okay. what, 1,600 years ago. 
the Roman Emperor. Wow. Aurelius. And uh, there were a couple of things that I studied about him uh, through documentaries and through articles, but not really the book by itself. And uh, I did not know I had I had that book in my shelf. <laughs> uh, it's it's one of those books that you have in the shelf that you haven't read. It's it's I have this collection of many books and I've read about half of them, but not not the other. But anyways, I'm on that one now. Uh, meditation um, just started that. Hopefully. I learn a lot from that. If I would, if if you were to tell me my favorite book that I would read again and again for the pleasure, for the learning, I would say in Nepali, uh, my in our language is called Unam uh, It has the story of uh, courage through uh, not just love but through compassion and and I would say uh, audacity. You know, there's there's a lot of lot of things in there. And that one, and then the other book in English, I would say Old Man, the Old Man of the Sea, uh, understandingly. So th- those are my favorite books but but then right now i'm on meditation sounds good thank you yeah thank you for sharing all those uh, books that we have read and i i love Bhagavad gita too myself it's a spiritual book but i guess all our life meaning and you know whatever you said when you ever have any obstacles in life if you read the book i think you will definitely know the answer and uh yeah, my last question we are towards the end of the show today uh so where people can find you number one and number two what is the one thing you want to Tell our audience a word of wisdom before we leave. Well, you can find me um, on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, it's uh, linkedin.com slash in slash Sujan KS or email Sujan KS at gmail.com. Uh, I believe uh, Sachin would uh, share that. Sure. Those are the best way to reach me. Uh, the one thing is, you know, in a game of chess, that's how I like to see it as, in a game of chess, you, you'll have to, uh, there's, a, there's a training process that you need to think six, seven steps ahead. Uh, and you need to see all the possibilities of those six or seven steps ahead. But the most important, the fundamental is that first step. Because once you make that step, the, the next step, all the other possibilities of the first step is gone. So the, that that first step, and you must take it regardless whether that step is going to be successful or not, because there are again so many more steps ahead, and you don't know what what the opponent, which is the life itself, the nature, and then you yourself are the opponent, right? What it has to offer to you. So that first step is the most difficult, but you have to make it the easiest. You have to be able to make that first step. It's very difficult, but you have to make it. Only then you can move on to the next step. I totally agree. Taking taking massive action is, is the key. Uh, just one step at a time. You can't take many steps at the same time. So exactly. One, 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 one. It's beautiful, beautiful. And again, uh, that was an incredible story. And from Nepal to US, giving back, you know, all the things you have done. I'm honored and and you know very thankful and grateful to have you in our show. Um, looking forward for another interview maybe yeah. down in the future I really appreciate your time you know thank you very much what you are doing you guys are amazing the team in Nepal uh, again anybody who is listening uh, who is watching this uh, episodes please uh, be kind enough of to share with your family and friends like and subscribe our channel thank you very much and we'll look forward for next show thank you thank you Thank you for listening to today's episode of Dream Big and Think Different. We hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe to our show so you don't miss any gold nuggets. We would appreciate it if you could rate and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, and other platforms. And be sure to stop by SachinMaskeyMD.com to download a free copy of Sachin's book. Until next time.